Boom! That's right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what is going on? Welcome back to another one new show. We're going to take you around like what we did a couple weeks ago in a little vlog style with plenty of Premier League to discuss. With the international break coming up, I want to dive into last week's results, see what happens, see who's cooking, see who's not cooking. I'm going to take you around. We're down the ocean today, so grab yourself a cup of coffee, sit back, watch it, enjoy, relax. Make sure to like, subscribe, because I want to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, so please, let's make that possible. And Man City, Chelsea, Cole Palmer, May United, and plenty more. So tune in, like, subscribe. We'll see you on the other side. Let's go. And is Ange Postecoglou a stubborn manager, or is he a really good manager? And after the other week where he comes up against Chelsea, they get nine men and he's playing a flat nine, counter-attacking football, injuries have hit Tottenham. You lose Madison and your best centre back, and arguably the best centre back that Tottenham have had in the last couple of years, all to injury just like that. They then have to go away to Molyneux, which Wolves are a bit of an up and down team from good players, but not necessarily the team that you expect to be defeating Tottenham week in, week out, especially this brand new Ange Postacoglu Tottenham side. This then happens, and Tottenham don't perform badly. It's just more of a case of Wolves really just getting them on the counter attack and taking advantage of maybe some of these tired legs and the lack of depth that I think Tottenham are having to suffer now from. Brennan Johnson was an absolute baller in my eyes. Takes the lead 1 0 3 minutes in, and Ange Postacoglu sits and goes, This stuff's too easy, mate. This is like the Scottish Premier League. This is like Brisbane Raw all over again. However, not over to the fat lady sings. And a couple of substitutions. I'm not sure if it was the best substitutions for Ange Postacoglu to make. Tottenham ended up losing 2 1. Lamina, I mean, Sarabia came on and he. he Unbelievable goal. I mean, that touch and then that finish was unbelievable. When Wolves end up defeating Tottenham for the first time this season, this is Ange's big challenge now. Ange has already overachieved with Tottenham. I think people already know that. But now, what does he do here? Does he still have the belief in his players that now, with a lot of injuries facing Tottenham, can they still come in week out, week in, week out? The depth is a massive issue now as well for them. Eric Dyer isn't the greatest centre back. Apparently, he's about to leave. So that's another sort of issue for Tottenham now. With what do they do with this depth? Wolves, on the other hand, unbelievable performance. But Ange Postecoglou, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And Tottenham fans, how are you feeling? Is this where we start to see? We always say Christmas time is when you start to get a real gauge on where the ladder stands and which teams will be fighting for what. Is this now where we see Tottenham start to maybe deplete a little bit and just find sort of where we expect them to go? But on the other hand, they were five minutes away from walk away with a 1-0 win away from home and continuing the undefeated season. May United get the 1-0 win against Luton and it wasn't pretty once again. It screams of the game like we had against Fulham the previous week where United fans are just sitting there hoping we don't get embarrassed and the embarrassment was very close but at the same time United just United just destroyed them but just couldn't finish their breakfast. I mean Rashford has chances. You know Lindelof ends up having to be the one that pulls through for May United. The worrying thing now for Man United is their injuries. I mean, an unbelievable injury list. We got Arsenal's doctor from last season, and Arsenal escaped a lot of injuries last year. He's come over to Man United, and everyone's getting injured just from walking their dog. So the injury list is growing. Hoyland apparently out until the end of November. Eriksen most likely will miss the rest of the year. So United are in deep, deep trouble. Honestly, deep trouble. However, is it all Ten Hag's fault? Is a Ten Hag out? Is he the one you know fans should be blaming? This is my problem, man. You know it fans a lot of the time. It's who can we look to blame? Ten Hag, I personally don't think is a person to blame. Look at the players that are in the team. That yes, there are like Anthony, who is absolutely dreadful, and I think I'm a better player than Anthony. That's a joke. But there are players that yes are dreadful. But there's other players that are still trying to get washed out and I feel like once again there's a lot of that dead wood which I think United have sort of gone a couple steps back in the terms of do we have players there that we know will be a part of the squad that might win us the league in the next 5, 10, 30 years? What can Ten Hag actually bring and what sort of style does Ten Hag bring to Man United? And there were those comments that he made that you know Ten Man United will never play like Ajax, we don't have the same players. Cool. You know, you, not to bring Ange Postecoglou up again. In an interview he did with Rio Ferdinand the other day, he said, he goes, everywhere I go, I like I tend to have a different coaching staff and a different team and a different group around me because I want to keep on bringing my ideas, but a different bit of flavour every single place I go to. He goes, Brisbane Raw was different to Celtic, Celtic was different to Tottenham. Now, everywhere he goes, he brings his own beliefs and his own identity, but with a bit of a mix in between with, of just other point of views and other opinions to make sure everything feels as sort of 
of authentic as it possibly can. Whereas for me, when I look out at this view, like you can see here, something that I can see, see is just a clear sky and a clear sort of point of view. And unfortunately for me, United, it doesn't seem that clear. Something just doesn't seem clear. Something doesn't seem like it's just ticking. And that, I guess we can look at above and look at the board and look at all that sort of thing. But for me, it more just seems like players aren't buying into it or fans aren't buying into it. And United fans, do, do you get what I'm saying? Do you get what I mean? I think it's just now that Ten Hag is our manager, let's back Ten Hag. Let's not automatically go, okay, we're losing, get rid of him. Who can we get in? Zinedine Zidane. Zinedine Zidane's disappeared off the face of the earth. Now that we have him, we need to stick by him. Yes, we're going to lose a couple games. Yes, we're going to win some games. Yes, we're going to play some fo football that makes us go sweet. The boys are back in town. However, we just have to make sure that no matter what happens from now on, the boys are just we're, just, we're just backing them in. Backing them in and we're looking to get the best possible sort of outcome for our team that we possibly can. Me United, United's toxic. They're toxic, I cannot lie, they are toxic. And that's the scary thing for me, especially as a fan as well. It's Ten Hag is our gaffer. Let's back in our gaffer. Guess if results don't come, hold him accountable. Tell him... Like, spread the word, hey, we need to do this, this, and this better. Business needs to be better. We know that the Glazers are terrible. We know that there's just not much going on for them. You look at our injury list, something has to be up for that many players to be injured. You look at Rafael Varane. He's kind of our sixth-choice centre-back as of now. Ten Hag doesn't want to play him. Okay, cool. Harry Maguire, give this guy credit now. He got fade out of the team. You say other players crack the shits and leave, kick a fuss, whatever. Jaden Sancho, that's M to you. McGuire worked his ass off and he's been one of our better players this season. Honestly, at this point now, who do you look at and say, oh, I'm going to give the player of the season to right now? I give you Hoyland, but Hoyland scored zero goals in the Premier League. I go Bruno Fernandes, just because he's really our only hope. Then I go, Dallow's been okay, McTominay's scoring goals. Harry Maguire has actually been quite good. So you get what I mean? Like, it's just little stuff like that. That United fans are just... In order for things to click, we can't just turn in to the Arsenal of a few years ago. Where we turn into AFTV and everyone just, no matter what we do, we knock it down. It's just frustrating. Just frustrating reading things. It's frustrating listening to United fans. It's frustrating listening to people. And I know I can be the same. I know I can be the one that goes rush for this, rush for that. But I want to see my team be the best possible team we, we can be. And with that, they need my support, they need your support, they need his support, and they need her support. So we all just, like, get rid of this. No, Ten Hag is not going to get sacked. Ten Hag might not be the manager that leads us to our next trophy. But give him more than just a year. And Ange Postacoglu has the balls to stick to his system and not to change it. And if he has an option about someone, and he has a decision that I want to play this player because he's better than that player, come out and say it. Back your players in. Ten Hag doesn't necessarily want to come in and, back and say it and back his players in. But when he does do that, fans turn on him because we think Sancho is the best player in the world. When Sancho is playing, everyone's down his neck saying that he's an absolute shit and he can't do this and he can't do that. Sancho has given me nothing for me to go, damn, I really miss Sancho. If you don't want to play because of whatever reasons there are, you haven't showed enough. Yes, people can say, well, Anthony hasn't either and Anthony's playing over Sancho. Okay, cool. But Anthony's is still there rocking up every week. All right? And again, we don't know exactly the situations that are happening. But I want to see people that want to play for the team. That banner that was lifted and showed in front of before the Fulham game. And McTominay said, we saw it. Let's go and give these fans something they want to come for. And then we just walk out with a scrappy one deal win. But we got the win. Wins are never going to be pretty all the time. They are ugly and the crows are chirping, which is a bad, bad thing as well. Because they're all stalking my car, which is scary. Right? But we have to stick by him. Okay, that's the, that's enough of that rant. Enough of that rant. Let, let's let, let's go. Let's go. We'll go. Come. Now, a game that was unbelievable on the week, ladies and gentlemen. Chelsea versus Manchester City. Now, what a game. We got treated the other week to Tottenham Chelsea. Chelsea just out here putting Barclays to the absolute shame. But I do want to talk about Cole Palmer. I mean, wow. Cole Palmer. Man City just let this man walk away. I mean, not for free. 
but they wouldn't let him walk away. A young gun, a player that's been there for 15 years and his baby still. I mean, Chelsea really got one there. I mean, you know, when they sign 40 players, you'd hope that they get at least one that's half decent, and that's what they have really done. Like Cole Palmer, I think will be Chelsea captain in the future. I think he'll be there for a very, very long time. I think he's sort of everything that Chelsea fans wanted Mason Mount to eventually be, and maybe that's controversial or not. But I think Palmer is everything that they want. That young sort of Cobham sort of academy prospect. Cole Palmer screams that. And that's what I want to say maybe is the biggest downfall is that they have sort of too many options and no clear best option and Sterling put in a good shift the other day as well against City but Man City sort of just doing what Man City does. I mean they walked away still with a point not fantastic but Man City they tend to do this they tend to start the year not slow but not fantastic. They'll but for Cole Palmer against this former team to go and pick out a 95th minute penalty that's ice in his veins and he's a great player and Chelsea fans I'd love to know your opinion on him but that that overall that game was an absolute belter to what and that's going to wrap us up for another one new show ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching apologies about that many night around it kind of just went and it kept on going I do want to get more of these out got to pull out an A-League one as well maybe during the week so hopefully more talk videos coming out to you guys soon if you do want to see more of I guess me, make sure to check out Bruce Shopping at Ultra Football as well. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. Follow the Instagram at 1-0-FC. And last question before you leave, and I'm losing my voice, is Cole Palmer the best signing under Todd Bowley already at Chelsea? I, I Honestly, I'm going to say yes already straight away. And he's played like five games. So thank you guys for watching again. Please, I'd love it if we could get to a 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Let me know if you enjoy this style of content as well. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.